Good day and welcome to this edition of the Royal LePage Binder Market Report. We're talking everything real estate. And you saw that handsome guy in our opening, the doctor of real estate. No doubt about it. He knows this business inside and out. Mr. Frank Binder, of course, joins me on the program. Good day to you, sir. How are you? Good afternoon to you. Uh, I'm doing well, absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, we're doing well. Can't complain. All right. Uh, it's a beautiful time of year, the fall yeah. season, yeah. and uh, real estate continues to be always a very interesting topic for a lot of people. And uh, it's funny, since doing this show, uh, I've had people come up to me and they want to start talking real estate with me. I said, you know what? You got to watch the show and you got to listen to Mr. Binder. I said, because you're talking yeah. to the wrong guy here. So we're all being educated. Well, so. you're, just, you're associated with us, so you should yeah. know. That's the key. Well, That's I'm the very, key. very happy to be associated with you, but yeah, definitely it. definitely not one of the professionals there. That's for sure. I appreciate it. Thanks. A lot of good things to talk about. Let's get into it right away. And we're going to get right into our, our, our charts and uh, we're going to let you... Uh, Break it all down for us if you can. And uh, the first one we're going to start with number of residential listings in 2022. And it's, yeah, and we, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, what's the story there? Well, the story continues to be a decline. So, and that's, uh, that's, that's actually not a bad. You see where the peak was in June of uh, 1,557 listings that, that came on the market. That was a substantial uh, uh, ad addition to the in inventory of uh, houses. And what we've done is seen a steady decline. Uh, and that basically was because people were trying to get their houses sold for that remarkable price they were getting in the in the spring, uh, only to find that that wasn't going to be the case. And what you see is a steady decline of uh, of, of properties uh, being put on the market after that. And more and more people are becoming more and more realistic about what we can get as prices have dropped. We've seen prices drop, so that's basically what it, what it is. We'll see, and we're also getting into that fall now. We're getting to November. Uh, we're Traditionally, uh, listings come off the market uh, as they, everybody takes a bit of a hiatus from selling their houses during the Christmas season and uh, well into the early, early winter seasons, right? Mm -hmm. So that's basically what's going to happen. We'll likely see this trend to continue. So tis not the season to be selling your house right now, I guess. We'll well, it, yeah, well, you we'll know, yeah. I wouldn't say there's it. still a small, small sliver right. of time to do that. And it's all weather driven. So we're having great weather. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say no, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, as we as we approach December, yeah, it'll it'll become a, a more problematic. All right, the next slide we want to look at and uh, get your your thoughts about uh, Mr. Binder is the number of active listings at the end of the current month. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, that is sliding off uh, only because listings are sliding off. So uh, we're not maintaining it. The sales are starting to take it down a bit. Uh, so as we see that inventory continue to drop, uh, what we what we'll see is that's going to be reflected in you know our our, our, our uh, balanced market approach to real estate. We'll talk about that later on. But really, what happens with this is that uh, the inventory really really grew to a high of July, and you saw that. Remember, you saw that listing slide with fifty with 1, fifteen hundred houses plus in June, while it's reflected in July, and then it's been tapering down ever since. Uh, as more and more people are becoming realistic about what they can get for their house uh, in terms of price and, and uh, either deciding to stay in the market or not staying in the market. All right. So that uh, explains that chart and makes a lot of sense there. Uh, uh, the, I'm going to go add ahead. one more comment here. I'm sorry about that. Sure. No, no, no problem. Add one more comment. Inventory uh, over the winter months will really continue to drop and substantial. Okay. Uh, okay. Many, many houses will come off the market right into the uh, – Christmas, New Year's, New Year's season, they'll take it off the market and say, okay, we're either going to come back in the, into the spring market or not. And so what we'll see is uh, you'll start seeing this in the, in the next month or two uh, where this number will seriously uh, drop uh, and people will consider what they're going to be doing uh, on the long term. How, how much will that affect pricing? Well, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, it's interesting you say that because very often the best time to sell your house is actually in February. When there's no houses on the market, if there's less to pick from, uh, and I have to I have to chase it, uh, that's exactly what happens. Uh, the houses housing pricing uh, will actually be better over the over those winter months because there's just nothing to select from, and that's exactly what's happening to our market generally. Is that we have much to select from, prices will drop because of that, and uh, the, the negotiations will go on. So that's really what we're seeing right now. All right. Uh, next slide we want to look at is the uh, number of residential sales uh, so far this year, I believe. 
Yeah. <laughs> and, and as you see, uh, if you see it like a flat line from July, you're not seeing, uh, you're seeing what we see. Uh, it's been, it's been flat and down. Uh, and I don't know what any other way to describe it. I don't want to be an alarmist, but, uh, you know, we're not seeing a lot of sales uh, in the market. And, and I'm going to say that predominantly that's because of interest rates for the most part. Uh, people have chosen to sit on the sidelines only from the standpoint they're not sure where it's going. Uh, they're not sure where the house uh, prices will go. We're not sure what uh, what inflation is doing to us. We're not sure of the interest rates because they seem to continue to in increase them you know, month after month after month. We've had five so far this year. Uh, it's unsettling, to say the least, for any kind of buyer who's trying to make a decision on, you know, what's it going to cost me to live there, right? And uh, it's a really hard thing for them to do. And so some of them are sitting on the sidelines waiting to see where this settles up. And I don't blame them. I understand that totally. Uh, but you can see the effect on sales here, and that's that's quite quite dramatic. I also yeah. one more thing uh, in studying this, which is not on the graph, is if we're looking at our sales here at, in October. I went to pre-pandemic. Okay, okay. Let's forget about a, the, the hyper-stimulated -stim economy that we saw in the pandemic. In our pre-pandemic October, it was over a thousand houses that sold. So you see, it's it's a substantial drop in what a typical October would be. And I think I wanted to let everybody know that. Wow, that's that's. That's, that's incredible. Big, when that's you think about it. Yeah, it's a big yeah that's 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 wow. That, yeah. that makes you go wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow in the in the wrong sense of the word. In the wrong way. Yeah, it's like wow, and it and it yeah. hurts. It's, it's exactly it's a yes. little bit of little bit of pain there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure our, I'm, I'm I'm really anxious to see what you have to say about this next slide. Uh, the average days on uh, market for 2022. Yeah, yeah we've added this slide in, uh, and we didn't. Because what happens is that when you start looking at these, all of these slides in tandem, you start to realize that you know, the, the cause and effect of all these things and how they, how they work together. And you'll notice that in days in the market, the very beginning of the year, the days in the market drop way down. While there's not too many houses for sale and uh, you know, it, the houses were selling rapidly and uh, that's all about supply. But look at what happens as the supply continues to edge up, right? As we got more and more inventory, it just took longer and longer to sell. Well, hey, that's quite obviously what's going to happen when people have a lot more to look at. So if I'm looking at five and ten houses as opposed to two, uh, it's going to take me a lot longer to buy them. And that's just as simple as that's simply what this, this chart is basically saying. People need longer to, to look at houses and to choose one. And that's exactly what we're experiencing right now. So. It, you'll notice, though, in the last last three months, it's kind of kind of hung around the one month uh, time, right? Yeah, and it's yeah. become more static, and that's exactly the same thing as the sales. You saw the sales the last four months are pretty much static, and now we see the same thing being done in days on market. So, we expect this to stay this way for some time to come. All right. Um, it's interesting because I, I've, you know, when I drive around, I see real estate signs and actually I've seen, I've uh, witnessed on a, on, a, on a few of them that uh, a new price, they, they, they announce on the sign that it's a new price. Yeah. Uh, so obviously yeah. this is, this plays into what this chart is showing. Exactly. It just takes longer to get the price uh, exactly where it should be and everything else. And uh, you know, people are still trying to get that higher price that they can. And then mm -hmm. basically uh, you have to, get, you have to become realistic about what, what the market's going to give you in terms of, of a sale price so that's that's what that's exactly what happens and it takes time to do that and uh, so that's why there's going to be more days on market all right uh the next slide that we want to have uh, explained to us mr binder is the monthly <laughs> residential sales percentage well uh you can see that since march uh, the numbers the numbers have been dropping down so our, our monthly sales percentage has been going into the negative quite a bit and and really in the last two two three months uh i mean if you see four months of minus 40 or 41, 42 percent, now 48 uh, percent, you, you know that uh, we have some difficulties with regard to uh, uh, be, being able to sell houses. And, and it, you know, it's interesting that uh, this has been the, the case. I have to also say to you that one of the reasons it drops like this is that a lot of the upper market, when I say upper market, I'm mm -hmm. talking about uh, market prices of 550 or more. A lot of that, have, a lot of those folks have, uh, have left the market. Uh, we don't see as much activity there. We still see some, 
but by far the majority of our activity is in the lower end of the market right now. And uh, that continues to be strong. So mm -hmm. when you look at a number like this, we're looking at the overall market. We're not looking at the under and over, and we're gonna look at that number soon in the under and over. Mm -hmm. The under and over, the underpriced, underpriced uh, under the 1550 mark is still strong. It's been constant, strong, continues to be that way. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about that momentarily. Yeah, well, let's go to it right now, Mr. Binder. The next the next slide indicates yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and exactly. uh, so basically, what we're saying here is that you'll notice that that the upper part uh, is the uh, sold under. It continues to be hovering between 250 and 300 in terms okay. of houses per month. Uh, and this month, when you look at the the three, you know, 300 plus houses that sold, 240 of them were uh, were in the uh, at the lower end, what I call the lower end, with under 550 mm -hmm. price tag, and uh, you only had 150 on the upper. It's the upper end of the market that affects the price the greatest amount, right? So when you're under the the average it doesn't have much effect on the price of a house because if you're selling under the average, it doesn't affect the price. The mm -hmm. over the average affects your house prices going up and going down. And so what happens is that we're consistently having houses sell in that very consistent in the, in the other market. But if you can see what's happened in the upper market, uh, it's showing that major drop. Uh, and it, it, it had a drop and then it kind of tailed, it plateaued in May and June and dropped off some more. And now it's basically staying about the same uh, for the last three or four yeah. months. Mm -hmm. All right. So continuing on here, then uh, let's get the sale prices, the average sale price uh, in uh, and the monthly average sale price. Uh, and again, this yeah. indicates what you're just talking about, the yeah. 550,000 under and over. Uh, yeah. prices yeah and you and you see you'll see two numbers there why we put the two numbers there is that you need to see that there's a steady drop in price on the top and that's what we call an annualized average and so what you do you take that all the sales of the entire year and you average it over that and you'll see that it's been a bit of a steady drop from a high of seven seven hundred plus to uh, now six hundred and uh 630,000 plus, but you'll see what happens in the monthly. So from as real estate agents, we look at the monthly average as well. And that's why we put it into a graph here. We wanted to show you what, what we see, because what we do with that, we see trends. And what we want to do is we, we need to make sure that people understand that the average price is not necessarily 542 right at the moment. It's really 630. Okay, so you need to know that the average price is slightly higher than that, not, not what the monthly average is, and, you know, uh, uh, and take that as a number that, uh, you know, that's what I'm going to go out there and offer people on houses. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's really, really important for you to know that. But we use the monthly average just to show what's happened in the last month and is that going to be a trend. And then basically a, a combination of a bunch of monthly averages shows the trend up, up on the top, right? So when you see that trend, if you take it from June on, that's the effect of that drop on the on the total for the year. All right, and that's really important for people to understand that. Boy, these these some of these graphics look like a roller coaster ride, Mr. Binder. It's unbelievable how it's yeah. changing. Well, what we're, what we're, hey, listen, the good news story for me, anyways, is when I see a little bit of an uptick at the bottom there, and that's really, yeah. that's kind yeah. of important. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a that's a yeah. We want to know that it's stabilizing, right? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, the next slide we want to look into. We're going to talk about the year on a whole to date uh, sales list ratio and also the monthly sales list ratio. Yeah, and that and again we do both the month and the and the and, and the sales average. And this is what kind of market we're faced with at the beginning of the year. You'll see that we were into the 76, 82, 76, 70. We were in a seller's market at the very beginning of the year. No question mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Inventory, we didn't have the inventory. Uh, everybody was scrambling to buy houses and so on and so forth. And then it dropped right down into July. Uh, and it's basically stayed since June, July, May. Actually, uh, it was coming down in May. Since June, it's basically been in a balanced market. What do I mean by that? Between 40 and 60% sales, uh, sales to list ratio, if you have 100 houses, and you sell 50 of it, 50 mm -hmm. of them, uh, that's a balanced market. Uh, and so you can go between 40 and 60 
and that's a balanced market. You drop below 40, that's a buyer's market. If you go above 60, it's a seller's market. So that's what you're seeing here. All right. So the market has gone and stayed relatively uh, in that balanced uh, balanced position. Now you look at the monthly chart. The monthly chart dropped down to a low of 30 mm -hmm. in July. So in that particular month, we could have said, well, it's, a, it's a definitely a buyer's market. Well, it's not really about buyer's market because you've got to look at the average. The average mm -hmm. on the annual basis is probably something you pay more attention to. But we as realtors always want to look at the monthly graph as well to see if there's a trend that's being set or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you notice that the trend pulled the numbers down to that 50 level. And that's exactly what happened. But here's, here's the interesting thing is even the monthly stats at the very end are kicking back up to where that 50% is. Yeah. Okay, so and that's basically why that that's why that graph has stayed at that level, and it's been kind of static for a while because the monthly trend of going down did not continue its downward growth. It actually kicked back up, and that's where we, we're sitting very close to both the monthly average and the uh, annual average being the same. Okay. A lot of good information today, I'll tell you, that's for sure. Um, one thing we've talked about, I think, uh, somewhat regularly here is the the most popular style of, of uh, homes that that uh, uh, are available or that are out there. Uh, we, we spoke about this in the last uh, market report, and we're going to talk about it again here. Yeah. I mean, the, the reason why we do this is really to kind of get, first of all, it's a different graph, and it's, it's about different things. So rather than just talking about numbers all the time, it's kind of interesting always to, to throw a graph in here that talks about, you know, you know, what type of houses are. But they're always, it's basically the same news, the bungalow and the ranch. If you take the, the raised ranch, bungalow and, and, and ranches, they far, by far dominate the market. And But it's really important to understand if you're looking at a house, the average sale of a house is different, okay? So when we throw a number at you like $630,000, on the average, that that isn't necessarily uh, a particular house. It's just the average of all the aggregate of houses that have sold, and we just do an average on it. Here, what you see is what a particular type of house is getting in the market. So you do a bungalow, you can see the average price, two stories are much higher, and so on and so forth. So that's why we add this in here, so that if you're looking for a house, you need to pay attention to what those types of houses will cost you on the average. And again, this is just an average. Every area where you buy these houses could be different as well. And so that's what makes it, it makes our, our business very interesting because you can go from location to location and sure you have a ranch for on, on the average of 589, you might go in a ranch in a certain area like uh, Tecumseh or South Windsor and you're gonna end up paying more money. So. Location, location, location. Location, location, location. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. That's all I've got. That's all, all right. I've got. Mr. Binder, you've uh, you've just tore it up today. That's for sure. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> we got right down to business great. there. Listen, yeah, it's, not a good, it's not necessarily a good news story altogether. All right. But uh, we're, seeing, uh, we're seeing stability, and that's the key. The key that we can hope for is the Bank of Canada cooperates, and they started to do that ever so slightly. Uh, by not changing the interest rates too drastically. Uh, they, this last month, they, 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 they didn't go to the 75 basis points, and they basically left it at, 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 at 50. And, uh, but you know what? With every one of those, and we've had five, it's like a little bit of a kick in the shins for the buyer uh, to try to figure out, you know, can I afford? Can I, mm -hmm. can I afford what I want to buy? And you know what? So we're seeing that in the market, and it is, hurting the, it is definitely hurting the, uh, the housing industry. Without yeah. Yeah. Well, there's always going to be a, a couple of hiccups here and there, so hopefully it doesn't last for a long time and uh, we get back to doing some really good positive business. Yeah, absolutely. And in, inflation too, you know, the sure. I, I, I yeah. inflation we've been dealing with. I mean, they've got to battle the inflation. There's no question about it. So we've got some, uh, we've got some challenges going forward. Uh, no question about it. We'll see what, uh, what 2023 has to bring. Hopefully uh, it'll be, a, it, it'll be a, what we call a soft landing and we'll be able to to do well next year. So next month, we're hoping to get the Frank Binder Christmas wish list, <laughs> and maybe we'll even have Santa Claus jump in here somewhere. We'll see what we can do. See what we no, can do. Doubt, no doubt it'll be another great show. Uh, always appreciate your time here today, Mr. Binder. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, uh, 
the knowledge is uh, second to none uh, what you bring here. So uh, it helps a lot of people. And uh, I get a lot of good feedback with this. So uh, it's, it's greatly appreciated what you do here. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right. That's it uh, for this edition of the Royal LePage Binder Market Report. Again, as mentioned, come back next month. We'll talk more real estate with Mr. Frank Binder and get, get you uh, up to date on everything that's happening in Windsor and Essex County in the real estate world. Until then, this is Dominic Papa wishing you a great day. Take care, everybody.